This is my granddaughter Nana. She is now a real young lady around town, having just passed her driving test. What does she have in common with a caterpillar and a beautiful butterfly? She has gone through one of the most important changes in life, metamorphosis. Young kids have parents or carers to look after them and love them, and it would appear they can live an almost idyllic life with nothing to worry about. I can remember that time when my kids would come up to me with a broken toy and say, Daddy mend! But then they would go through this metamorphosis and become young adults and have to take decisions about their lives for themselves. This is the time of greatest challenge they will ever face. They have to decide whether they adopt the paradigms and the conventional wisdom they have been taught or do they rebel and create their own paradigms. It is an intensely important time in our lives. Once we have been through this rebel phase, we seem locked into the paradigms we have adopted and find it difficult to adopt new paradigms. And sad to say, us oldest have really screwed up the world, so they really need to create their own new paradigms for the world we now face. There are some, many of the old, who talk about the good old days when things were so much better. Let me tell you, as an older person, this is a pile of rubbish. Two world wars, the Great Depression, widespread poverty and the Cold War, and the threat of atomic annihilation. The good old days are just a myth. We are now a rich and prosperous society, and our prosperity has come from two sources, from technical innovation and cooperation. We have staggering ability to make things cheaper and faster than imaginable a few years ago. And that includes food. But we are producing food which shortens our health span rather than increases it. We have stuffed it up. We have stuffed things up because we have forgotten what has enabled us to become the dominant creature on earth. Our empathy and willingness to cooperate with other humans and the natural world we live in. We fail when we put self-interest, greed and power ahead of the community and we allow ourselves. By the way, facts, true, but only in specific circumstances, are presented to us. This manipulates our understanding of the real world, a roundabout way of saying we are lied to on a scale never seen before. Innovation is not just about being clever, although a level of technical competence is required but above all a willingness to challenge the conventional thinking. It is about paradigm busting. Innovation is about changing the world, and it is my conviction that innovators have responsibility to see that their innovation is used to benefit humanity. Never before have we seen the rate of innovation we are now experiencing, and never have we been more challenged to ensure that it is working for the benefit of humanity. The great innovation is our ability to make things on a scale we have never seen before. Part of this is the result of the information and our ability to automate, and the other part is globalisation. I was part of that automation in the information age by my pioneering development of computer-aided engineering, which changed the industry across the globe of which I was selected by the Institute of Engineers as one of Australia's top 100 innovators. Many years ago, it became obvious to me that the way we were producing our food was a fundamental threat to humanity as we were destroying our soils and depleting our sources of fresh water. I took the major decision to leave the world of high-tech computer simulation and see if my innovative capabilities were up to finding a way we could feed the world without destroying the natural environment on which life depends. So I set about developing a system where we could grow food which was full of the essential microbiology, in essence gut food, and it did this by breeding biology in organic waste and was therefore highly sustainable, and in fact was taking a waste product which was typically ending up in landfill to produce the highly toxic greenhouse gas, methane. But 
while I may have been happy with this technology, it worked great, but it is only being used by a dedicated minority, such as people who have been influenced by the permaculture movement, but was having little or no impact or benefit for the general population. But then I observed the most extraordinary event, which still leaves me stunned. Climate change may be one of the great threats to humanity. Scientists have been predicting the harm it may cause for humanity for centuries, but it was having minimal effect. Then along came a little girl with a grotty cardboard plaque who literally changed the world. The question was how did she do this and could this help my efforts to change our food system and bring it to the reach of those people who are not avid growers, the bulk of the people who just want to eat food that will make them healthy right into old age. To read the full story go to gbiter.com and look for my blog Food and Becoming Adult. You may also like to register so you receive notifications of new blogs.